Hi hamster lovers and welcome to Pancake's channel. Today I'm going to be setting up the hamster enclosure again for a new hamster. Unfortunately Pancake passed away so I'm sterilising all of the stuff ready for a new hamster. I use soap to clean all of the plastic and ceramic items. By the way, in this video I'm also going to cover some channel updates and what to do after your hamster passes if you'd like to get another hamster. Obviously no hamster can replace Pancake and I'm not going to be getting another one for quite a while as I'm still grieving Pancake. I baked all of the wooden items in the oven for about 10 minutes at 200 degrees celsius. Here's all of the supplies that I'll be using for the enclosure. So first I just put some platforms into the enclosure. These prevent heavy items from collapsing on the hamster if they decide to burrow underneath them. I use Orbeo's hemp horse shavings as bedding. When mixed with hay or aspen they hold burrows quite well. It also comes in a pack of 20 kilograms for 20 pounds so it's quite cheap. It's really important to compress the bedding to make sure it holds burrows well. Then I just put in Pancake's peak away hideout. This is a new seagrass tunnel as Pancake peed on the old one. As Pancake is the one that started this channel, I'm going to be keeping the intro and the name of the channel the same. This is to honour him. I might even call the new hamster Pancake. Next I put the sand bath in. This is really important for absorbing the natural oils in their coat. And it helps keep them clean as they can't be bathed in water. Then I put some aspen bedding in the lower portion of the enclosure. This is great for burrowing and also acts as a different substrate for them, which is enriching. Next I added this little coconut hideout as well as some branches, which are brilliant for them to climb on and hide in. This is the fresh, soft, dust-free timothy hay that I feed the guinea pigs. This is great for enriching the hamster's natural foraging behaviours. Next I added a bendy bridge which are unsafe unless you cover the gaps with moss, which I'll do later. After that I added some sorghum sprays which are brilliant for enriching the hamster's natural foraging behaviours as they can pick the seeds off of the plant. I'm planning to get the new hamster from a breeder, but most baby hamsters have never seen sprays before so this will be the first time. It will be interesting if I decide to rescue a hamster that's been living in a small cage to then put them in this massive enclosure. I wonder what they'd make of it. They wouldn't have seen sprays before, so I'm not sure if they'd know whether to eat them or not. Next I added some dried herbs and flowers, or forage. This also enriches their natural foraging behaviours. This is the best type of sand that I've used and it's not dusty at all. I also got a ceramic mushroom hideout from Amazon. Next to it I'm putting some moss. This is great for them to use as nesting material and as a different substrate. It also looks very natural. Another different substrate that I'm adding are beach chips. These enrich the hamster's sense of touch. I'm also adding a slate tile and a ceramic dish. These will help wear down their nails. I'm also adding two walnuts. These act like foraging toys as the hamster has to try and get the nut out of the shell and I'm also adding three monkey nuts. I haven't filled the water bowls up yet but here I'm adding them. And finally I'm adding a whimsy dog chew, some mealworms and also some toilet paper that's torn up. Torn up toilet paper is great for them to use as nesting material and they should be given about one whimsy dog chew a month. I haven't added any food as I'm not sure what sort of diet the hamster that I'm getting will have. And here is the finished setup. I think the mushroom hideout really added a nice pop of colour and so did all of the rose petals. As baby hamsters have a tendency to pee on their wheels, I'm glad I've got a plastic hideout now instead of a cork one. The cage has about 13 inches of bedding in the deepest section and about 5 in the shallowest. I'm not sure when I'm going to be getting a new hamster but I just thought I'd get the cage ready for when I do find one. It's really important to get the cage ready before you get a hamster. That's the end of this week's video, thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed it, please consider subscribing. Bye!